also monitor the chat, guys, if you want to put your questions there. Or if you don't want to go oh. off mute, I'm happy to answer that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And um, uh, so uh, once again, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Um, as you know, we uh, record our calls and we place our recordings on our YouTube channel. So if you don't want to be recorded, uh, you may want to drop off now. And this call is joined by Microsoft team members as well as from our customers and partners. Let's start with our topic of discussion today, and that is overview of Azure App Service uh, authentication solution. And let me explain why I chose this topic. So I have um, multiple discussions with multiple customers on uh, hosting their web applications in App Service, and you know, uh, they were existing application, brand new application, and we were looking at what's the best way to solve it, and we looked um, into different solutions, and that's why I want to have this discussion. What is available, what each solution provides, and um, what is best for your scenario, okay? So we are going to look at, first of all, app service built-in authentication, okay? So this is the, uh, I would say, kind of the easiest route to go. This is available as a part of app service. Uh, you don't need to write a single line of code with a point and click or running a single uh, PowerShell or CLI command. You can make this authentication available. OK, and I just want to explain, uh, I'll spend a few minutes here like how this thing is working. Basically, as you know, Azure App Service and going into the guts of the service, it has two pieces. One is the front end, and one uh, the second one are the worker VMs, okay? Um, the front end handle most of the uh, telemetry as the people are coming in and kind of, uh, in this case, it handle authentication, Basic, if the cookies uh, is uh, stale, it will get the uh, new cookie or refresh the cookie, I'm sorry, and do all that stuff. So that's where authentication is happening, okay? And then um, you have the uh, kind of uh, middleware, this authentication, that, sorry, that's where authentication is happening. So um, before it goes to your app, uh, all that authentication is uh, taken care of. So what it does is then it will generate a cookie and send that cookie to you. And um, it will, uh, the information of who is the you signed in user and all that, okay? And then you can use that cookie to find out who the user is and all that if, if you need to, you know? Because most application, if you um, think of, need some sort of uh, authentication. And that's, uh, and most of the time you just need the user information, some basic information to go on. So that solution fits really well. And one of the good thing is it require no code change in your application. So we have uh, with my customers, and I'm sure you have worked with customers where you have application that you want to modernize, but those are written, um, I mean, that's, uh, kind of a, those some application which are kind of are just there and you don't want to make a lot, lot of code changes or they're written in um, certain uh, kind of uh, rather old frameworks where you cannot just uh, bring it to app service. You have to put it in a container into app service. So you still want to don't want to make any code changes in that case. We just want to maintain them. That's where this solution works really well. You can um, bring your app up um, and uh, let the authentication, just kind of think of it outsourcing the authentication to the app service, and here we go. And uh, from that point on, once you have that thing running, um, you can ask them to sign in. And by the way, it does support not only Azure AD, but Azure AD B2C, 
um, Azure, um, sorry, uh, Facebook, um, Amazon, all the uh, Google, all the, uh, you know, the standard and Open ID Connect. If you have your own uh, Open ID Connect server, you can use that as well. So basically, it supports all of that. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jump directly into the demo to show it, and then we will look at the other one. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to compare these to see like where each one sits and what are some of the pros and cons. OK, so let's quickly go in and just to prove my point. Uh, by the way, any questions? I have a very simple web app that I have deployed in Azure. And let me show you this web application. This is the. Um, this is my web application, and if I go into browse and it's showing up headers. And uh, let me go into a uh, private window and open it up there. And as you can see, it's just showing some headers. Um, that's all it is doing. And it didn't ask me to sign in, even though I'm in an anonymous browser. OK, so let's um, close this and let's enable authentication. So what we're going to do is and I want to show you some of the intricacies and some of the things that happen. So first of all, you have to select an identity provider. As you can see, there are all these providers available. Uh, Open ID Connect, if you have an Open ID Connect server on your, your own, you can use it. Uh, otherwise, you can use Microsoft. If you use Microsoft, so there are two. One, one is workforce and second one is customer. Customer is basically B2C. Where you have the custom accounts like customer accounts like let's say if you have developed an e-commerce site where people come sign in and they are um, using this uh, site to buy some stuff or let's say uh, you know uh, checking their account or whatever they may be doing in that case you may be using customer preview because you don't want to put it all those customers in your uh, Azure Active Directory or intra ID as we call it. OK, but we are going to use workforce. Let's say that this is a inter, uh, application that is used by the company and you want to use that. That's that. Then what you can do is you can either pick an existing one or provide the details of an existing one. You can pick that. I'm just going to go with the simplest option. I'm going to say. Go ahead and create a new one. That's it. And then there are option about Current tenant, in that case, it's only um, uh, the existing tenant that I'm using. This is my Active Directory or multiple tenants or both Microsoft and personal account or personal accounts only. So you can pick those options. And th as I said, once again, the simplest one is just my tenant. OK, and this is an interesting one. Restrict access. I would say if you are doing authentication, you may want to uh, say require authentication instead of allow unrestricted access. Uh, because if you are uh, doing authentication, uh, you know, then there's no point of allowing unauthorized access. OK, uh, in some cases, yes, there are some web, maybe some content you have for non authenticated user and some for authenticated users. Uh, you know, in that case, something different, but we will once again go with a simpler approach. And if it's unauthenticated, it's going to forward it to the recommended website. OK, so with that, I am going to. Um, add this identity provider. And give it a second and it always uh, asks you to upgrade to v2 so let's do that so we can edit it so it has done two things first of all it has created a app registration behind the scene okay and that app registration um is that's how it is connected to Entro id or azure ad whatever you call it and let's go to that app registration uh 
if we go in there, this is the app registration. As you can see, this is and the service principle behind the scene. If we uh, look at API permissions, it has created these permissions so it can read the profile. At the same time, if we go in here, it has created this URL for callback. This is to sign in. So all of that is set up behind the scene. Um, if you already have a app registration, you can do it, but it does it all that for you. And in addition to that, it has created a secret. So this is the secret. That's how So basically this app needs to link itself to enter ID. Uh, you know, that's why the secret is there. And that secret. Is in the configuration. Is automatically added to your app configuration. That's the authentication secret. If we can expand it a little bit. Anyways, this is the authentication secret. And one thing to keep in mind, it is recommended that once you do that, you want to move this secret into Key Vault and use a Key Vault reference. Because in this case, anybody can come in and look at that secret and say, okay, yeah, this is secret. And then, you know, they can uh, misuse it or something. But if it's in a Key Vault, then you are separating the security concerns. So you are saying it's key, uh, coming from the key vault, so it's more secure, okay? And security team can make sure that it's encrypted. It's in key vault, and you use a key vault reference here. So, but that's beyond the scope of this discussion. But in any case, now our app is um, ready, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse it and uh, pay attention to the... So now it is asking me to sign in. And I'm going to sign in as myself. And um, it's going to ask me the permission. Standard procedure. It can read the profile. And uh, since I'm admin, it's asking me, do you want to consent behalf of the organization? I'm not going to do that. And let's say, OK, so now it is showing all the headers that are. And these are the headers that are very interesting to us and let me show you here this is the one okay so this is the name this is the username who is signed in so that's how you can get the username and what who is the identity provider um you know service principal access token all of that information is here so you can use that to take that information and do something with it um, if let's say that uh, no matter since it's coming in the headers, so this information I'm extracting with the headers, since it's coming in the headers very generic, so any app, it can be a .NET app or um, Java app or JScript or whatever that it may be, it can extract those headers and do something with it. Got it? So that's all about the... Um, um, about the uh, built in used to be called easy auth. Now it is Azure App Service Authentication. Remember, it does not do authorization. As you can see, it just authenticate and then you have access. You can customize it. You can check or, or what you can do is you can take it a step further where you can request the claims and find out and then do something on certain uh, parts of your website, but that's on you. Built in, it provides authentication. Any questions so far? OK, so let's move on. Let's move on to go back to the slide deck and let's move on to the other options. So we already looked at uh, and let me bring the slide deck up. You all can see it. Okay. Second one is. Um, you know, second one is the Microsoft Identity.web. This is kind of a wrapper, a .NET core wrapper around MSAL.NET. Okay, and what it does is it provides you the ability, but just keep in mind, uh, oh, sorry, provides you the ability to sign in. And this is in the scenario where you are building an app that is from ground up, you know, or 
it's a .NET. Basically, it works only for ASP.NET Core. Okay. And one other thing I want to mention here is that it has integration with VS Code uh, and, uh, of course, a Visual Studio so tools. So if you are building locally, you can test it because one thing I'm sure uh, you have noticed that once I turn on the authentication on the web app, I mean, you cannot test it locally. You know, uh, if you are, if you want to see what is your behavior of the application when it's uh, being, uh, when the authentication is turned on, how you test it, that is something that is not possible with the app service uh, built in authentication because it is done in Azure. So you have to turn on some tracing and see what's going on. On the other hand, with the uh, identity.web, you can test it locally, but it only works with ASP.NET Core. Okay, and we will take a look at it in a second. Um, so that's uh, before we jump into the third option. Let me show you. I have a very simple website, and that is here. And that is using, as you can see, um, this one is using ASP.NET Core. There is some um, stuff from that one I'm using, and this is the authorization. Basically, I need to use that. This tells me, tells it that I will be using identity.web. So I'm turning on authorization. I have to provide information about domain, tenant ID, client ID, callback path. All of this information is required. I have links in the end where you need to see, I mean, where you can see how you can turn on this. As you can see, this this requires a, um, you know, coaching. And, and by the way, one other thing is you can create an application when you, if you are using SP.NET Core, you can create an application using um, the ASP.NET web app. So this is the command line and I'm going to open the command line here. This is the command prompt. So think of it. This is the one .NET new web app auth single org. This is the client ID tenant ID. Whatever you want to provide a name of the app and then you will be able to create this app. So basically you can a lot of infrastructure or whatever things that you see here will be created uh, once you do it the way. Or if you have an app, .NET app, core app, and you want to modify it, you will have to make those modifications. Okay, and this is the uh, login partial screen where it is, you see, it's coming as a part of a user identity. So the user object that is available as a part of ASP.NET, if the user is Authenticated, it will be able to get it. Otherwise, it will take you to the sign in page. Got it? So let's go back here. I have already deployed this application, so we don't have to um, see the paint dry kind of. And this is the app. And as you can see, I'm not using any authentication provider for this app. So let's go in here and uh, let's. Browse. And as you can see, there are no identification or uh, you know authentication headers in this one because authentication is now done inside the code. Okay, so all of that information, and this is the sign that I am signed in. Okay, and just to show you this behavior, if I open a anonymous browser, let's say new. Windows. Okay, and I'm signing in. Ask me, yes, you want to sign in. Here we go. So as you can see, it provided all that information. But once again, uh, the name of the user is here, so it's able to get that from, um, you know, from the 
infrastructure itself. Got it? So that's, I mean, that's that's the kind of a key thing uh, to note here. That um, the key difference here is in one area, it was outsourced, AS, uh, app services taking care of it, no matter what framework your application is written in, it's sending it in the form of cookies. The second one, it is controlled by uh, the um, the code, you know, the framework or the code, and it only works with ASP.NET Core. Okay, so let's go back to our slide deck one more time and look at the MSAL.NET. Just keep in mind that Microsoft Authentication Library, its main goal is to provide the ability to sign in to get the token so you can call other services, okay? And once again, it works with uh, Android, Facebook, Google, Twitter. So all three works with different uh, ID platforms so you don't have any issue uh, there, okay? Um, and I'm not gonna go into detail with MSAL because it's kind of a simple, uh, I mean, similar to identity web, uh, but just keep in mind, there are MSAL libraries for pretty much any language. You have Node.js, you have Python, you have, of course, .NET. That's what uh, behind the scene Microsoft ident identity web is using. So all of these things are available. So now let's come to the use cases, okay? I think we have briefly talked about them, you know. Um, if you don't care about uh, the code and you want to write very little code, app service authentication, built-in app service authentication, easy auth is the way to go. You know, um, you have social um, user support. You may have legacy app. Like I know I've worked with a number of customers who migrated legacy apps into Azure in the form of containers and they don't, I mean, they don't even, the developers have kind of left the company these kind of apps, which is just maintaining it. In that case, the authentication is outsourced and, you know, they are, that's it. I mean, just one button click and it it's done. There is no code modification. And they just want to make sure only authenticated user access it. There's no configuration required as well, okay? App service authentication. If you have an ASP.NET Core app and you need IDE support because you want to debug that app, in your local environment, that's where you can uh, use the identity.web. Once again, it's only for ASP.NET Core. Okay. And just keep in mind, it supports uh, both ASP.NET Core, sorry, um, yeah, both uh, identity web and MSL support incremental consent, where you can uh, ask for you know, certain uh, claim or check for certain claims and things like that, you know, bo both are supported. But of course, identity web is only for ASP.NET Core, but MSAL, you can use it for any other language. Okay, any questions so far? No questions on the chat, Naveed. Thank you. And this is, and by the way, this is also from the documentation and this is, as you can see here, um, this is kind of a high level uh, comparison, and this is kind of a summing up those points. One thing is um, that um, in regards to Visual Studio integration, Microsoft Identity Web is the best way. I mean, you can run your app locally. Uh, I know I didn't show it to you, but uh, for example, this app here, uh, this one, I can run it locally and it will ask me to sign in. So, I mean, as I'm running this application locally, it will bring up a browser and ask me to sign in. So basically I can test it. So, and just to prove the point, look here. This is running on my local machine and it's, uh, you know, uh, kind of asking me to sign in if I am not uh, signed in. So this will say that, you see, this is my signed in. So this is already, um, I'm already signed in the browser. That's why it's saying I'm signed in. So just to keep uh, 
you know, convey the point that you can test it out locally. That's the main thing. Okay. And uh, one second. And uh, and by the way, uh, all three handle expiration of the token. And one uh, keep in mind that if you need custom authentication logic or info about the user, uh, you cannot do it with built-in auth. You have to write code for that. On the other hand, with the authentication library or identity.web, you can do that. Because if you want to get more information about the user, you will have to do use particular library to get that, you know, you know, authenticate at the, as the user at, as that user and get that information. So that is not available as a built in uh, as a part of app service built in or that. But that is available in authentication library, MSAL and identity dot web. So um, in general, that's all um, I want to discuss. So kind of a gives you some idea like when to use which method. And I still say if you are not doing some very uh, kind of in-depth authentic, I mean, some very custom authentication stuff for, you know, conditional access or incremental access. I think app service built in auth should be more than enough uh, for your application. But once again, please look at the docs and uh, I have shared the resources to make an informed decision and um, go from there. So that's all I have to discuss. If, you know, we still have two minutes, so please feel free to ask if you have any questions or uh, hope to see everybody next week for another session of Power Lunch. Okay. Very Thank Naveen. you. Thank you very much. And I hope everybody had a wonderful uh, weekend. Great afternoon.